here in the Nubra Valley, day four of NASA Space Abound in India 2016. And this is our first sampling site, as you can see. It's the Panamic Hot Springs. And the team is basically uh, divided into two groups. One of them has set it to 100 sand dunes, and the other one here is sampling the hot springs. And we primarily have microbiologists, geochemists, and some geologists. And the objective here is to locate uh, several spots around this source. So what you see over here is uh, a nice downstream flow coming out from a particular source uh, of uh, hot fluids coming from under, under the earth. And there's several interesting features for which people are interested. And towards that, they have located out five sampling points. This is a perfect site. It's a free-flowing water, so it's not contaminated per se. We can still take a few samples here, a couple of right at the origin and a few here. The clearly what you can see is the temperature is pretty high. We will take actual temperature measurements, pH and other stuff here also. But here clearly you can see there are mats. Yes. Two types of mats. One is brownish and one is green. The green is definitely a photosynthetic, mostly algae. Uh, the brown are probably archaeas and bacteria. We will find archaeas here for sure. Okay. So one thing we want to see is how the temperature is changing. Definitely there will be a change in the temperature. The kind of microbes. I mean, this is this is a thick film of microbes. Yes, it's a biofilm. Okay. So microbes have already adapted to this condition. They're, these are only specialized kind of microbes. So the, the kind of biodiversity we'll see is very limited. Only few species will be here because they have already adapted to these conditions. Mm. And which is great because this is what we want to see that what kind of microbes will be adapted to these conditions. But the origin is very interesting. Okay. So yeah. Uh, we'll do some scouting, we'll go up and see where is the origin. First site we found that this place was very contaminated with, you, with everything that could contaminate it. So that was not good for us. But then we found another site a little bit further down that seemed to be a little bit cleaner. I do believe uh, people have taken water from there and all, maybe brushed their teeth in there and things like that. But at the moment we were there it seemed okay. It hadn't rained in some time so it wasn't run off into the hot spring. Everything was kind of pushing outward. So since there's a positive flow from the subsurface, we mostly push everything that is a contaminant mostly out. So I believe there is a baseline contamination there, but I don't think it's going to be very, very high. So we sampled the same exact things we did before. We did the aseptic uh, sampling in different parts of this hot spring, the upwelling as well as this more stagnant water. And then we uh, backed that up with the geochemistry sampling, looking again for the different anions, cations, dissolved inorganic content, oxygen content, carbon content, pH, temperature, and as well as gas extractions to look for what type of gases might be coming up from the subsurface. And then uh, also I took samples for myself to study the enzyme and hopefully the metabolite content. So it was a very interesting site in the sense that it, uh, it, 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 it started, it was a very calm spring when it first got there and then suddenly the, it started to boil and the water rose maybe like this much and it was boiling for like, you know, almost nine minutes and then the activity stopped and the water level went down and another 20 minutes later it would start again. And I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> so, so that process is cool. It's a bit beyond um, my understanding of the spring, but uh, I'm going to bring it up with some colleagues because it's a, there's a fun story there. And the, 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 the spring that was right next to it was not doing that. So the plumbing is different. And so it's, it's, it's intriguing in that sense. thought 
Suga will be the holy grail of the whole expedition. Um, what we have studied, what we have understood from the Google Maps and other other literature we had, that it's a whole, it's a it's a pretty big system. It wasn't a small mud pool or one small source of origin. It was a whole system, and we were expecting that we will find at least several dozen different sites of origin uh, from there. Uh, a the accessibility was not that uh, very difficult. Uh, we have to cross the marshland to reach up to that site. Uh, and that site was contaminated. People have already drilled um, and the drill was contaminated with uh, cloths and plastic and other, other stuff. Um, the site has very high uh, hydrogen sulfide coming out from there. Uh, we didn't collect the samples from there for the obvious reason because it was contaminated. Uh, the other sites were also completely dried up. Uh, so we believe that we are in a extremely dry time of the year, um, water must be present there throughout the rest of the time. But at this time of the year, uh, there was very less water. On the right side of the road, you can clearly see a lot of uh, sulphide deposits. So at one point, uh, there must be some hydrothermal activity which was uh, uh, depositing the sulphides there. But on the marsh side, which is on the left side of the, of the road, we were able to find a couple of sites where uh, there were drills and the drills were kind of broken and the water is gushing out and it has formed a nice runoff. So we were able to collect samples from the origin and from runoff. The reason we collect samples from runoff is because the pH changes, the temperature changes and obviously the microorganisms which survive around that changes too. So we were able to collect the whole system, not only the site of origin.